Um, there's a lot of fad diets going on right now. And I know you didn't always. want to try to whack them all in each one of the always. diets. Always. Just wanted to ask you, uh, just if you thought about approaching a few of the diets. One, which I know you've been asked about before, but I have to ask you, is the carnivore diet. Michael Greger, the founder of Nutrition Facts at Dark, just recently was on the London Real Show. And one of the most hilarious scenes ever was when Michael was asked about the carnivore diet. You know, Dr. Jordan Peterson's on it, and I know him and his, his daughter uh -huh. feel a lot better. Mm. I think there's reasons for that. Mm. Um, and some people swear by it. What do you think of what's happening there with the carnivore diet? Uh, uh, so I just swear at it. That was my... <laughs> my uh... I think no interviewer really got a comprehensive answer from Dr. Gregor thus far, but Brian from London Real just kept on pushing and pinging. Um... Well, why are they seeing results? Oh, no, no, so, no, so, no, so uh, if you have, so it's like people who uh, go gluten free, feel better. Today I'll break down the carnivore part of the London Real interview so you learn something new about Dr. Chi and how he thinks. I will actually analyze all the micro parts of this interview. So even if you watch the interview or this part of the interview before, you will still learn something new. Are you ready? Let's hit it. One thing that is very unique about Dr. Gregor is his rambling. And so, if you have a variety of food intolerances, so you cut down, so if... Now, I personally find this very appealing and personal. While a lot of YouTube commenters under that video obviously write that this is because of his diet. This guy, for example, even writes under that video that Dr. Gregor has light stage veganism. Yet, yet this is not so easy. We have to understand that intelligence and knowledge and the ability to articulate are two skills that are not closely correlated. For example, we see the same thing in Elon Musk. Elon Musk is this awesome inventor and business guy, yet he reminds me of that one smart guy in class that couldn't explain anything. But the regular rockets that went up that weren't designed like planes never tried to do this. Right. Um, the plane thing is not, not a good idea in my view. Um, the, so so the, the, the plane, um, and the, the reason I think is, like intuitively it seems like a plane should work, but, but actually if you, if you consider that really every mode of transport has a design that is appropriate to its medium. Um, and if you're in... If at all, an intuitive ability to articulate well is likely a sign for decreased intelligence. Because what you will see from the smart guy in class, Elon Musk and Michael Greger, is that in those parts of communication, there's a drastic knowledge gap between the sender of the information and the receiver. A knowledge gap is a difference of the individual level of knowledge of the two individuals involved in discussion. And the bigger this knowledge gap, the harder it is to communicate properly. For example, my knowledge when it comes to fitness and nutrition is on a very decent level. Let's imagine I have three layers of knowledge. So if I talk with a quality gains client, which likely has less layers of knowledge than I have, that's the main point why they hire me, then I have to adapt my communication. Let's imagine with another fellow trainer, I would talk about essential amino acids, leucine, muscle protein synthesis, while with an actual client, I would talk about protein structures or even Lego blocks. The knowledge of Brian that you see here versus the knowledge of Michael Greger when it comes to nutrition is obviously not on the same level. And you can see this in the following microfacial expression of Brian in that scene. And that's why they feel better, but in your mind that's not sustainable in the long run. Oh my god, you can get... <laughs> it's a... It's a... <laughs> <laughs> Brian raises his eyelid and tenses his facial muscles, which is usually a sign of stress. And the reason Brian behaves this way because he was generally interested in the answer and was unsure about the topic, why for Michael Greger it was obviously a stupid question or a joke. It's a, it's a day you get scurvy off of, now that's it, I mean... It's and the same thing happens here. Brian Rose is posing a serious question about lime juice for the vitamin C on a carnivore diet and Michael Gregor cracks up, thinking, thinking it was a joke. So you put, a, a, so you put a little lime juice in there and you can still get <laughs> 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 
you like to see Michael Gregor adjusting his behavior and become more calm to do not seem disrespectful and threatening to Brian. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean, a zero fiber diet. Yeah, no. I mean, look, it, it's so it's the antithesis of what one would expect for a, a healthy diet. You can actually see how Michael Gregor is trying not to crack up in the future and calms his demeanor because you realize that Brian is obviously not on the same nutritional knowledge level than he is. You can see this micro love right here. I right. mean, I mean, it's just, I mean, it goes against every, I mean, you know, there's right. just but consensus. some people are living it. In the, oh, oh my God, some people are. <laughs> God, the I could look at this clip the whole day. <laughs> now, this next scene right here is hard, but you can actually see Michael Greger trying to be less, quote unquote, disrespectful to his host uh, right here. Caution, you can only see this if you're quite good at social skills. You think right. long-term they're just oh, gonna be dead? Oh, let's see it, right, of course, I mean, right. Did he spot it? Let's play it again. Term, they're just oh, let's see dead. it, right, of course, I mean, right. Michael Greger is aiming to say, of course, then cuts his words off and says, I mean, right. Of course, I mean, right, of course, I mean, right. Of course, I mean, right. Saying, of course, to a person unsure about the topic can seem threatening and unempathetic because it implies that what the other person said should be general knowledge. That's why Michael Greger is using the word right. Of course, I mean right, of course, I mean right. Of course, I mean right. We see the same thing in the next clip. Let's see if you can find the expression again. When Brian Rose suggests that there might be future positive studies regarding the carnivore diet. But, and who knows, maybe 10 years from now there'll be a study, we might be surprised. What? I'm open to surprises, but yeah, so <laughs> okay. what are, uh, yeah. And what about uh, the keto, keto diet? Michael Greger is first trying to challenge the assumption with, let's see, then changes to, I'm open for surprises. Let, I'm open to surprises. What? I'm open to surprises. <laughs> what? I'm open to surprises. Then Michael Greger actually deep down wants to continue with, but yeah, so what are the chances? But then cuts himself off again. But yeah, so okay. what are, uh, yeah. And what about? But yeah, so okay. what are, uh, yeah. And what about? Because he realizes that Brian Rose doesn't have the same fundamental knowledge that he has. And this makes it really hard for him to, to communicate this message properly. The message for you here, fellow vegans, is actually quite simple. It is to simply realize that when you are talking to an omnivore, an unsuspecting omnivore, you guys also have a knowledge gap between you. While you might know everything about dietary protein, factory farming, and the effects of livestock on global warming, your discussion partner might not. As said again, in this discussion that you have in your life, there's an obvious knowledge gap. So we need to make sure that we stay respectful and kind. And the more knowledge that you have in a certain field, the more you encounter those situations where you deal with people that do not know what they're talking about. So vegans, remember that if you want to spread a message of compassion, it helps if you're compassionate as well. Until next time. The mission of this YouTube channel is to put veganism across the goal line. If you want to help us achieve that, like and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Let's make food production great again.